Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about T3 stack. I mean, it is just like the same. Uh, we are just adding the new things. We have already talked about the Prisma Next JS. And now in this video, we will also include TRPC in our videos. So we will just get started and we will see how we can attach the TRPC server with the Next JS route handlers. So we already have a Next.js, we have a TypeScript, we have a Tailwind, we have Prisma and we will just add this TRPC also. So npx create t3 app latest. This is the command which you will run to create a simple t3 app. t3 app is just like uh, another stack or just a combination of uh, these technologies like Next.js, Prisma for the ORM, Next.dot for the authentication and trpc for handling some of the api routes so you just answer a couple of questions and uh, it will give you all this this particular setup which contains next auth uh, prisma tailwind trpc and uh, this environment variables right so uh, we already know uh, how we have used next auth we already know the prisma the new thing in this particular video is how to work with trpc so we have already explored a video how to just create a simple trpc server with the express so we have express application in the node.js and i wanted to create a trpc uh, so what we were doing we were just using this trpc adapter and attaching the trpc routes trpc router to a particular express route this is basically we were doing same thing we are going to do here in the next JS. Some of uh, the API routes in the next JS will be handled by this trpc router. So I did npm inst pnpm install so everything is done and now we are going to look into this particular folder which is uh, this t3 notes app and we will see this uh, prisma schema file this is auto generated I mean this is a scaffolding which has been generated through the t3 stack it's uh, nothing new so we will just change the database url and couple of variables because database we are we are going to use a postgres not sqlite sqlite is a file based you can also use sqlite and do everything as it is but if you want to just have the feeling of uh, real tables and all then you can just use this uh, postgres postgres is there on uh, using we can create a postgres container using docker compose up we already have a docker compose yml file when you do docker compose up we will have this container up and running so we will just replace the database url now because we have the container we can just replace the database url so localhost uh, this is 5432 some database and here we will just replace the sqlite with the postgres sql and uh, we can also all, also see all the different models because these models has been initialized by this this t3 stack and next auth because if, when you see there are two approach we can use next auth using database strategy and jwt strategy database strategy that means you wanted to persist the user login session in the database then you will just register these adapters like prisma adapter type orm adapter with the next auth that will help you to persist the user session and a user data in your own database so if you just log in with the google log in with the twitter log in with the facebook what is, what what is happening it is happening on the fly if you are not using these prisma adapters then you don't need to store that credentials this next auth will just give you the session token and your token will be established when you are doing login with the github instagram and all but when you also want to store the session and uh, store the user information in your database there then you can use these adapters and uh, these adapters will store the user data with the session information now what we are going to do we are going to create a node so we will have a two different other models with the user we are going to have a topics and nodes so topic is like node.js react microservices next.js these are topics and nodes like i am creating a simple nodes for each and every technology so nodes will be a foreign key nodes will be a uh, Notes and topics, topics and notes will have a one to many relationship means uh, the notes will have a foreign key of the topics primary key. So it's like a one to many relationship we are going to have and topics will have a user ID 
uh, as a foreign key so you can see here i'm just specifying user user relations fields is user id and reference is the id that means the user table id as a primary key will act as a user id in the foreign key in the topics and here we can see user id and the notes then we will have another model notes so the notes model will have the some same set of fields but the relationship for the relationship it will be uh, one to many that means uh, the notes will have a no, uh, topic id topic id is a foreign key which is a primary key in the topics table that will act as a foreign key in the notes table so it's like a same one to many relationship primary key foreign key constraint which we have in the relational database like mysql postgres oracle and all so here uh, we are just specifying topic id topic id will be a foreign key so here we are just going to specify the relations topic is of type topic at the rate relations and field that is the topic id which will be referenced with the id of topic table and what you will do after this if your schema is valid you should be able to run the migration how we do it npx prisma migrate that is like a basic simple command which we can execute so here we are doing npx prisma migrate dev okay and you can see there is some error okay the user in the model topic uh, okay so we have to specify the relationship both way like user will have a topics topics will have a user reference so we forgot to add the the topics in the user model so user will also have a topics here of type topic array so that is the relationship which we forgot and that is complaining when uh, prisma try to run the migration it will first validate your prisma schema file and now i did prisma migrate dev so it has created this migration sql file that contains all the the sql statement it has executed you can see it has created all the tables and then later it has created these primary key foreign key relationships like user id is a foreign key in the topics topic id is a foreign key inside uh, the notes so these uh, foreign key also getting created so when you do migrate dev it is actually migrate applying these uh, sequels to the table so that you are uh, having all these tables and the relationships created inside the table mm -hmm. Okay, so we will replace this with the github client id and the github client secret so this is schema uh, this is env like uh, these environment variables needs to be there before you start your application so even if we are missing something in the env it will throw an error and we will know that okay this is the required variables you are not passing and it will break the the build okay so we need to just fix this with the github client id these are the runtime environment variables because we are going to use github providers and how to get this client id and a client secret i will just explain that you can go to your github and uh, developer settings and you can create a new auth app there you just need to provide the name and uh, your callback url that is really important and it will give you the client id and the client secret which you can just pass here and have this uh, github authentication enabled using next auth because next auth can be attached with all these social providers github google facebook twitter instagram what you need to do is you need to provide the auth credentials like the client id and a client secret from the google developer console from the twitter developer console from the github develop, uh, github developer settings so this is how it is going to work we already have a next js 13.x and we are going to use a next auth and uh, we have this prisma so prisma is actually an orm which we are going to use to read and write to the database and this trpc route so how we are going to plug all these things there will be a request coming from this react uh, coming from the ui components like a uh, next js server side components you will be sending a request authentication will be done by next auth and this trpc router is going to respond to all the forward slash trpc request so it's not like we are exposing uh, so this next js route handler is attaching this trpc route this trpc handler 
and you can also build your own uh, API routes if you want like in the API you can just create your API profile API login or whatever you want it's just TRPC is just a one part of uh, next JS API routes like for the next JS API is for a particular path I want to handle that through this TRPC route handler and this TRPC uh, route handler will be using this TRPC router to expose the methods because it's TRPC it's not rest APIs where you are you, where you will define the resource path and the methods get put post delete okay so we are using github auth using next auth and we are using this uh, database adapter using prism uh, database adapter using prisma so here uh, what we are doing is next auth is using prisma to read write the session information because there are two strategies JWT or the database strategy database strategies means you wanted to store the session information on the database and once you log out the session information will be removed from the database so we are doing using this next auth library for enabling the authentication in our application for the TRPC we are using this TRPC route handler and now if you look into our code so inside this source we can see this is our package JSON which contains the Prisma client and lots of dependencies related to the TRPC server and TRPC client then next next auth react react dom and all the types types contains the ESLint prettier and all and this is our server and this contains the the TRPC this is the authentication next auth options which contains the callback adapter we are using Prisma adapter and this is should not be a discord provider we should be using github provider here and it is using github client id and the github client secret okay so this is our auth and inside api folder inside server we are writing all the apis and this is env.mgs which is specifying all the environment variables we have which we are passing to the runtime and this file is actually doing the validation with the help of jord and this is our next auth configurations and here we are creating we are passing the next auth to this handler so next auth should be able to handle your login logout uh, all these different uh, callback calls because it is able to handle all these and this is the prisma client same good old code creating the prisma client on the development or register this prisma client to the global object otherwise uh, if it is not equal to production then do this otherwise just use the prisma client and these are the example router because this is the example setup and you can see here this is a trpc and in the trpc also we are just uh, accessing this uh, server side session gets a server session if the session exists then only you should be able to access these apis because these are the protected api so you can create this kind of a middleware with the trpc that only if the next auth session exists at the server side then only allow user to access so here this is the example router now we are going to create our own route like nodes and the uh, topics so uh, this is the nodes this is the nodes router and we are going to create topics dot ts okay and all the the configurations are already there like uh, creating the trpc context creating the trpc router now we just need to add these two more routers like the topic routers and uh, nodes router because example router is already coming with this t3 stack scaffolding example router and uh, all these methods so here we will define the methods and this pub this can be a public processor or the private processor private processor that means you should only be able to access it only if you have already logged in means server side session exists so trpc is exposing this public processor and the private processor and this is like a one to many relationship between topics and then the nodes so, so what all methods we are exposing through the trpc so we have a create topic and fetch all topic in the nodes create node update node delete node right and we already know that uh, topics and the nodes has a one to many relationship one topic can have multiple nodes and like topic is node.js node.js can have multiple nodes written for the node.js similarly for the react you have created a nodes about react hooks react latest changes react 18.x react context apis all these will become nodes so it's like uh, 
one to many relationship we have in the topics and the notes so how we are going to do with that so we can just uh, here create trpc router so we'll just go inside the trpc and we will see what public processor and the protected processor we are using so there is a two things being exposed by trpc trpc is returning as public processor private processor middleware and router here what we are using we are using this protected processor that means it is using some middleware in the trpc context which is checking that your server side session exists from the next auth or not if the session doesn't exist it won't allow you to access this so if you talk about the trpc don't uh, think that it's a complex and uh, we are just having a hard time in understanding this no it's a, it's a simplified process even the whole skeleton code is there in the trpc context we are passing both the properties session and the prisma object model object so if you and we are passing this context in the query and the mutation so query means i wanted to fetch the data mutation means we are changing the state so query means i wanted to fetch all the topics so context uh, whatever the context you are passing that will contains two things context.session.user context.prisma uh, and from the prisma we already have access to these models context.prisma.model name dot this type of prisma operations like find many find unique uh, update uh, create all these operations you can perform here we are creating here we are fetching so how to fetch prisma.topics.find many where user id is this so if whatever the topics you have created you should be able to fetch them and the other thing is you can see this is protected procedure and we are using this enforce user is auth means user context.session.users must be there then only it will allow you to access so this is the protected procedure we are exposing and inside a context we are adding the user object also if your session exists so context already contains the prisma and the session and also it's adding the user object there so in the context.user it would be able to give you the user from the session and then here uh, other like topic.create topic dot uh, fetch these are the two methods we have so first we are building the backend backend means uh, we are building the next JS API routes which uh, is going to consume this trpc server and here we can do all these different operations create and get so create so how, how it works like the the procedures we are defining here so all the methods we are defining inside a router you will have a method name dot query even before that there is an input input means if you want to validate your payload so query dot uh, input so protected procedure dot input dot query or mutation protected procedure dot input means this is my payload object dot mutation means I wanted to change the state I means I'm saving some data right so I'm just creating it's all about create update delete you will use mutations but when it comes to fetch we are going to use query so protected procedure dot query pass the context and access the prisma if uh, protected procedure dot input dot mutation here we are accessing the prisma to read and write in the the database so that is the difference like here we have a nodes here we have a nodes and the topics so nodes is like uh, another entity another model after the topics which contains the topic id as a foreign key in the nodes so once you created a topic you should be able to create the topic also against uh, those particular topics so their topic id will become a foreign key so here instead of nodes router we will also write so topic router we are done so we are creating nodes router and we will define all the methods like create update delete uh, fetch all the the topics fetch all the nodes for a particular topic id okay so here we are doing uh, data validations uh, here we are creating a node so like uh, i need to get all the nodes so all these apis will be there I mean these are not actually api these are the methods give me all the nodes based on the input input contains the topic id that means give me all the nodes created for this topic id so it's just like i need to do a where clause using prisma utility like where topic id equal to contact topic id equal to input dot topic id so that is all about get on 
give me all the the nodes for this particular topic id right so topic id is actually a primary key which is acting as a foreign key in the nodes table so we are just passing the topic id and based on the where close in the prisma we can just fetch all the nodes created for a particular topic let's say you have created a multiple nodes for the node.js so you will be passing a node.js topic id and similarly we can do uh, other methods like create node update node and delete node so these are like a couple of apis we have so i will just try to uh, skip forward this which we have because we already have discussed this how we are doing in the topics so similarly we are going to do the create and inside the create we are passing title and the content and the topic id so these are the three different properties we are passing in an object so this is how we will do the validation in the create input and this is an object and doing the mutation here we are doing the mutation and context.prisma.modelNameNote.create and we are passing all the properties title content and the topic id so it will create your notes so these are the different methods we have and then finally we have to register all of these inside this particular router so here we are saying is create trpc router and we are passing example router topic and the nodes because we already have all the methods defined in the topic router for the topics nodes router contains all the methods for the nodes now we are just combining them and creating a root router and also exposing the types here which can be used by uh, this uh, trpc client and here you can see we are using this next auth options prisma adapter which contains the providers and ad adapters so inside this we are passing the prisma prisma is actually a prisma client we are passing in the prisma adapter and these are the next auth options like i'm just going through some of the files which you can see in this particular stack uh, here we have a trpc auth.js and these are the different options which you can pass in uh, auth options next auth options so strategy jwt or the database pages callbacks uh, adapters you can specify debug if you want to debug each and everything it will just put more console log more log messages uh, on your screen if you do it like this and then you can also pass your custom logger if you have and then here is the theme and then uh, use cookies and all so all these options you can pass in the next auth okay now next important thing is we already have this uh, prisma migration done that means we already have all the tables so I, I will just do npm run dev and i do see some errors so let's try to debug this what is this particular error is talking about so this is saying is github client id required okay i have passed the github client id and client secret so you need to check your env file and you need to pass both these parameters so i copied them and i just pasted and this is how you will get the github client id and a client secret so you go to the github developer console create your oath app and here i have started my server on 3000 and uh, let's see how we are doing authentication it's like a simple showcase so i will just uh, go to so this is a local host 3000 you just reload it and try to log in and it is saying login with the discord it should show login with the github right so something is wrong we are not using maybe the correct provider in our next auth options or uh, while doing a sign in are we passing anything else so let me check the code what we are using for uh, what what is happening uh, underneath this particular button right so we are just clicking on to the sign in and sign in is helping us sign in is looking into all the providers which are available and based on that it is giving us the options so if you see there is a google provider and a github facebook then it will give you three buttons if currently we are using only github as uh, the provider so that means it should show you the github so we will just check our next auth and uh, there we will try to find out where is this problem is here we are using discord provider so this is the bug so we need to fix it by using github provider and we need to import github provider uh, from the provider so you can see all these providers are available auth0 github facebook twitter we are selecting github provider 
So now I will just try to save it and try to run the application again. And uh, okay, so let's try to run the application again. And now we are passing this as a GitHub provider with the GitHub client ID and a secret. We'll go to the home page, sign in with the GitHub. And now it works, right? I can see the GitHub button and now it has logged in. If it has logged in, that's why it is showing me my name and the post login message that you successfully logged in and all these things are happening. You see all the Prisma queries, which is being executed. So that is important uh, how this particular session is being maintained at the client end side. So I did a, I did a logout and now, now I'm doing a login and I will check what session are we getting when once user is doing a login. So how we are getting this uh, session token at the client side. So when I do the login here, I did the login and it will just generate a particular cookies that is uh, next auth session token. So this is CSRF token and then there is a session token. These are the tokens which has been returned in the in form of cookies by the next auth. They are managing the session at the client end side. Okay. Now uh, also you see check the queries. So what it is doing, it is also when when you're doing the login first, these, these are the tables we have, right? Sessions, user account, verification token and all. So this is the account created for the, the login. Here it is we did the login using github so it also it is also saving my user data because we are using prisma adapter so prisma will store all this user information in the user table and then you can see i uh, there is a session token so this is how we are persisting the session of the user once you do the logout this particular record is getting empty this particular table is getting that record is getting deleted that's what i mean Okay, and this record is appeared again. This is this is how we are storing the session token returned by the next auth in the database because we are using Prisma adapter. I mean, it depends on your choice. You can just keep using any adapter and just use this GWT strategy, which will just generate a token and it will return to the client side. But we will not be storing anything about the state of uh, the token in the database. So these are two strategies, JWT strategy and database uh, based strategy. Okay, so let's start building the components. So what are the common components we see in the application like header, uh, footer and uh, sidebar, new bar. If you have, these are like some of the components which you can build. Here the components we, will, we are going to decide based on our UI. So on the UI, we can see there is a text editor and then inside a sidebar, we are showing all the tags. So I can see notes editor and the notes card because it's like a, if you look into this application, it's like a to do app. So there is some form you enter, submit the information, save it. That to do application needs to appear somewhere. Here we have these topics and the, the notes. So topics will be shown inside a particular list. You will select a topic and then you will start adding the notes on that particular topic ID. So your uh, Information is your your code looks kind of a similar. Now, if you try to structure our components and pages here, we are using session provider because we are getting session from next auth. So this is how you will wrap your root component and pass the session to all the child components. So here we can just clean this up because uh, we don't need all of these. And we will start start adding our client components. Okay because we need to show simple UI with the topics list and then notes create form and the notes list. These are the, the three components which I can remember. We have a notes list. If you can see this UI, we have a topic list in the left. Then there is a notes uh, notes list, notes list using notes card. And this is the form which contains the two input text fields, right? So, and these are the just uh, tags like topic tags which you can create. So I can see header, notes card uh, and uh, notes list. All these components I see we should be able to create note card, note editor and the header. These are the reusable components. And now we will just start writing our GSX. So here I can see header and the content. So because header we already have and the content is the component which we can create. 
so header is on the top and there is a content component and content component is going to import our rest of the components which we need to show on the screen so first of all you will get the session data session data is equal to use session use session is the hook which you can add in your components to access the current session data so all these things we can do and what it, it is going to return some JSX so this JSX will be uh, all the things about what we are going to show on that particular screen so here we will try to uh, put the header component from so we already created alias components header so this is our header component and then we are initializing the session using use session so all the components we can import here note editor and note card and this is a kind of a layout which we have created like uh, okay this is the four column grid structure in the first column we are going to have this topic list and in the rest three columns we are going to show the note card and this form component okay so let's see the note card note editor and header component and here you can see i have a grid column four and then this is the first column and then second co column is a column span three i mean the three column width is for the second column and the first column is only for the remaining column width which is one so here we are just going to do ulli i mean the it's like a list we are showing and uh, that particular list should be able to clickable because we are selecting a topic here whenever user clicks on it clicks on that so here in the the first uh, left sidebar we will be getting all the topics so how can we fetch the topics that is important this is how we will be understanding how we are using these uh, use query hooks to fetch the data uh, from the APIs. So here we have a data which we can get using API dot. So I think this is like we are going to access some query like fetch all the topics that exists. Right. So we can just use uh, api.trpc so what is what we are exposing through the the types app router okay let's uh, see that so we are just creating we are just checking the apis how we are doing the client integration like component integration and here we are creating the apis and the api data so we are getting the topics so how would we access the APIs so let me see we need to import the APIs first so here you can see API dot notes dot because now I can see the the Prisma API methods are populated on the the notes model so this is how we can do it so this is about fetching fetching the data so API dot topics dot get all that is actually a method name and then it is doing query query means give me all the topics which has been created so here we got all the topics and then topics dot all these operations we can run to get the UI so topics is an array and we need to show that on the sidebar and create topic create topic is a mutation so how we do how we are doing api dot topic dot use mutation and that can, that contains own success call book so what should happen when you are succeeded so we need to just refresh so here we are just doing a refetch topics okay so what is the next thing we are doing here is we got the data and uh, we are going to use this particular topics array so So here we have a create topic, create topic and uh, list all the topics. These are like the list all topic is an query and this is a mutation. So I think this is should be use mutation. Inside use mutations, we can define your callback. So here these are the different methods we are going to have create note, delete note, create topic. This is a use mutation create and on success refetch all the topics so refetch all the topics is getting triggered 
whenever you are adding a new topic and now you have the topics as an array you can run a loop and can list down all the the topics in the left side bar okay so we can just run a loop onto the topics and for each and every iterations this is going to create a, a on click event because we need to select that topic which you have clicked on and pass the topic id in our api so whenever you are doing on click we are doing set selected topics that is a huge state hook and we are passing the topic name so when you click on to it the selected topics will be added to the state and then that selected topic id will be used uh, for other apis so here this is input text field where you are entering the topic and when you click on enter that means you want to add uh, the new topic in the system so here we are just uh, fixing this on key down so there is on key up method on key down will be there like you are just click on to the enter after entering the text field that means you wanted to add the topic in your system so we can just do create topic dot mutate and it contains like uh, title will become event dot target dot value and we can just say event dot target dot value okay that will become empty and event dot current target dot value so this is input text field when you are clicking on to this this will become empty okay so this is all about all the components which we had now what we are going to do we are going to just put remaining things inside this column span so first column we did lots of things with the next auth and next cs and prisma and now this is another block where we are going to show the grid where we can show so this is the column span 3 means uh, the right side of the particular page and inside this we are going to have a nodes so let's say if we have a list of nodes so we can just do a notes.map and can just try to publish the, the, the notes information okay here you can just do a note card information note card object and pass the particular note okay so uh, how we are doing it note card so here we have a note card component which is exposing on delete means you wanted to delete a particular card then delete note dot mutate which we have already defined on the top and we are passing the note id okay so this is uh, a simple our index dot uh, tsx and here we are going to use a note editor So here we have these two components not editor and note card component so let's say you already have a note list we want to show that inside a note card then we will be using note card component and there is a header simplified header which is just nothing but a, a fixed height uh, header which doesn't have lots of menu options so these are the sub components we are going to create header note card note editor and these components will be imported by index.tsx because it's a, like a one single page where we have a note card component note editor component and in the leftmost we are just showing uh, all the notes all the topics name of the topics in a particular uh, sidebar list so this is a simple header we are creating which is about creating a simple tailwind uh, header here we are using Tailwind and Daisy UI. Daisy UI is actually a uh, Tailwind template library that has uh, the nice set of classes which we can use to build the UI. And here you can see if session data dot user is there, then uh, if the user is logged in, then you don't need to show the sign in. You can just show the notes application. If user is not logged in, then show the default text. okay so this is a simple our component and here you can see uh, when what we are doing is so this is the username and here we are just showing session data dot user dot name if uh, that is true then just show the label information so here you can see if the data is available then show it otherwise hide it so that means like 
once you logged in using next auth your session would exist and here we can check that you are not you are logged in show the logout button if you're not logged in show you the login and the register button this is how this is going to be and then we have a note card and the note editor component these are the only uh, pure components and the major components we are going to build rest all the implementation is very easy so here we are creating note editor note editor is just like a, a input a rich text fields where you just enter the the details and we should be able to submit it to the next js apis because it's a server component so here we are adding the typings like a uh, note editor will have this own save method as a pop which is passed as a props so once you enter the data inside a note editor you should be able to when you click on save this information should be able to passed and there you, we will call this on save method which is going to run the mutation onto the trpc method right so what we are doing we have already have trpc server in the client side we are just using this trpc react or trpc client library to trigger the query and trigger the mutations uh, in the whole application so here we will just uh, get the code this is like uh, what you have entered in the particular rich text field okay and then we have code and title so set title these are this is like a huge state how we are going to manage the state for the variables and then uh, we can just return our editor like how the editor looks like so we can start uh, writing it so it's like a card class and then uh, i think we can reuse some of the code here you can see uh, header.tsx note card and note editor component let's say this is a note editor component okay inside the the note editor component it's it's going to be a rich text field where you click on to the save it should be able to see whatever the data is available okay so here we are just going to specify the class like okay card title and specify your card title and uh, okay so here it is input type text so here we have this uh, simple note editor which is setting up the title so these are like uh, input text field which we already have that is setting up the the values in the sys state okay and uh, this these are the input text field and then there is another input text field which is going to be uh, similar so this is our note editor component which is just using this rich text markdown that uh, whatever that content you are writing should be of uh, markdown so here we are using code mirror component for that and when you do on save what is happening is uh, we need to populate the data so this is my note editor component which is when you are doing which should be able to save it and this is how we are doing a mutate because here we are actually uh, creating things so we are using the mutation and here we have this all the other additional component header note card note editor and inside api we have index.ts so this is like a very simple component to input text field uh, one is the code and another is a title so whenever you are doing a change we are targeting on change populating this state and then this data we are is being passed as a payload okay so you can i can see that uh, placeholder is a email username
okay so here we are creating all these nodes nodes has been created these are the input text field values title on changes event object and set title event dot target current target dot value okay so this is our simple uh, notes editor right so we need a note card note editor and the simple header these are some of the components which we need and here you can see we are just passing the button and this is how we are doing the mutation uh, create node dot mutate we are passing title content and the topic id so we know that this is the new node has been created for this particular topic and we will just save it and we are also fetching it once it is done so this is the note editor which is sending us both the parameters So here we can see that uh, these are the different methods. Let's say if you want to create the node, uh, update the node, delete the node. So what we are doing api.notes.create use mutation. So this is like update node, delete node, create node. And all the queries are also being triggered. So this is how it really looks like notes from Tarun. And this is we are using Tailwind CSS, but I will check why these styles are not getting applied here. This is the left sidebar where we can create the, the topics and in the right sidebar, the right uh, layout, we should be able to create the notes. So I just log in with the GitHub and I think my session exists and I can see these console messages happening through the to the TRPC server. And here I can create the topics. I should be able to create the topics from the left sidebar and then we will check our UI why this is showing really uh, old behavior. So here we can create a topic node.js press enter, react press enter, microservices press enter. So we are able to create a multiple topics. And then when you click on individual topics, we should be able to fetch the results, whatever we have saved. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we are just creating all these tags and then we will just create the, the nodes. And then we can also see the different list of the nodes. And now I will just start creating uh, some random stuff which should be available. So here save. And then I can see uh, we can just change the width and height of this particular, but somehow the styles are not getting applied. So we can also check the tailwind config. This is, this is how we are passing the tailwind utilities. And we are importing this global.css which is importing all the global tailwind configs and here we are not using any plugins and this is like a default tailwind a tailwind post css and all the configurations and here we are using daisy ui so this is like a plugin which you need to add and here i can see including the daisy ui and my ui totally changed because earlier the daisy ui library or the plugin we were not using that's why it was showing like this. Now we have added DZ UI plugin and our UI looks like this. And here we can create a tags for a particular topic. You select the topic and start creating the tags. You switch the topics and you should be able to fetch the respective uh, nodes you have created. So let's say you are creating using the Node.js. You will just enter the topic name. Right. And you can also delete the tag which you have created okay so uh, what we are going to do so this is like this is all this is how we are dealing with the the whole implementation so see you in the next video in the next video we are going to build another full stack application uh, which is going to use the the same set of exciting exciting these uh, technologies excited technologies So thanks everyone. So this is all about this particular uh, video. Here we have covered some concepts of the TRPC, how to create TRPC server and how to attach TRPC to the next GS handler so that, uh, so that we can expose these TRPC methods like which we have done for this uh, from this notes router and the topics router. 
and those we were consuming at the client side so it's co it's covering how we can uh, do the the client side integration and call these uh, trpc endpoints through the next js okay uh, uh thank you everyone i see you in the next video